Join us now, Dr. Scott Gottlieb, former FDA commissioner. He's also a CNBC contributor, serves on the boards of Illumina and Pfizer. I keep hearing it again and again, Scott, that the previous record for how quickly you can develop a vaccine is Ebola, and it was five years. Now, uh, there are, you know, President Trump said, I, I want one by the end of this year, and people that just, I don't know, for some reason don't want to hear anything positive. You know, we saw the same thing with potential drugs and everything else. But, you know, you're very uh, realistic. And in fact, a lot of people say, oh, that Gottlieb, he's, he's been way too pessimistic about a lot of things. Whereas, in fact, you're a doctor and you're just very realistic. But even you have said it could be by the fall. We could have a viable vaccine. You don't discount it completely that something could be uh, w with the state of today's science. We could figure something out that quickly. Have I got your, your feelings on that correct? Well, I think we could have more than one vaccine in large-scale clinical trials by the fall and available millions of doses and maybe low tens of millions of doses once you aggregate what's available across the different manufacturers. Most of the vaccines that are being developed by the large U.S. companies, Moderna included, are largely on a comparable time frame. So there's no one really ahead of one another. I think these are likely to be brought through development on comparable time frames. The regulators are going to want to bring them through development alongside each other. But we could have millions of doses ready to deploy in the fall in large-scale clinical trials. And in the setting of an outbreak, we would deploy it to a city and probably use it in the setting of an outbreak both potentially therapeutically, but also experimentally. Remember, these are going to be very large trials before these uh, vaccines get licensed. If you look at, for example, uh, Rotatec, the vaccine for rotavirus, that was tested in 70,000 patients before it was licensed. Gardasil, I remember, was around 60,000. These were approved when I was at FDA the first time. Um, tens of thousands of patients are likely to be enrolled in each of the trials with these vaccines in large phase three trials. And so we're probably looking at, you know, at, in a best case scenario, a 2021 event in terms of approving the vaccines, probably second half of 2021. But they could be available much sooner than that to be used on an emergency use basis and also be used in large scale trials where you're also delivering treatment. See, that that's it just depends on what you're talking about then. So it, it is 12 to 18 months and, and people that, as I say, are are more pessimistic about things point to 12 to 18 months. And what are we going to do? Stay shut in for that long. But you need to say what, what you're actually talking about. And the actual number of people that were getting it in that 12 to 18 month period is substantial. Could be millions of people that are that are getting it in the meantime. That's that's potentially right. I mean, it's it's a little bit of semantics, but right. um, when are you going to have it actually approved for everyone? Probably at, in a best case scenario, second half of 2021. When could it be available to start deploying it, both therapeutically and still experimentally, while we're collecting information? That could start as early as the fall. I mean, it depends on how much risk we're willing to take. But in terms of actually having a sufficient safety database and a long enough follow-up to feel confident that you can mass, mass inoculate an entire population, I suspect the bar is going to be pretty high and appropriately high. But that doesn't mean that it wouldn't be available in the interim to be used in selected circumstances okay, Scott, to try to drive a benefit.